What's going on guys? It is the Zoomer Value Investor here, here to talk to you guys today about what I believe is gonna be my most important video I've ever made here on this channel. Why is this my most important video? Well, I'm gonna be talking about index funds. I believe index funds are a quintessential part of any investor's portfolio, as well as index funds are a quintessential part of investing in general. What's so special about index funds and what do I mean when I talk about index fund? Well, when I talk about an index fund, I mean a broadly diversified portfolio, generally of 50 or greater stocks, preferably of hundreds or more stocks. And they serve to follow what is called an index, meaning the index is a long-term strategy that will continually readjust around that strategy and will follow that trajectory for the long term. This is my most important video because it is proven by a lot of academic research and a lot of continual academic experiments that it's just a tried and true proven strategy for any investor to do well in the market. In general, when I look around at the stock market YouTube, I just don't see a great representation of index funds in stock market YouTube. And I'm being straight up honest, I feel like even though I've been an advocate of my favorite index fund, if you followed up till now, you know what that is. I feel like I've personally really underrepresented how much I love index funds in my videos as well. And the reason why is buying an index fund is like buying you are admitting to being average. When people come to Warren Buffett for investing advice, he actually mentions, hey, go buy an index fund. That's like one of his most commonly said quotes. That almost sounds like red herring advice, right? I mean, one of the most successful long-term investors of all time is telling you, hey, go buy a product that makes you become average. I mean, to quote one of my other favorite finance stock market YouTube channels, Benjamin, that strategy of Warren Buffett himself telling you go buy an index fund, that's like LeBron James saying, hey kid, I mean, you'd like this, you're pretty good with this basketball thing, but you're also pretty good with computers. <laughs> Maybe consider a computer science degree. The thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, is it's not flashy advice, but it is great advice. But what I also hope to do with this channel is never kill any dreams or any aspirations you have in the market. You know your risk allocation, I know mine. I completely understand that it can be completely different and it's very welcome to be different. I mean, that's what makes a market, right? If we were all perfectly risk adverse and perfectly risk oriented at the exact same moments and the exact same allocations, we wouldn't have a market. I myself consider myself a higher risk throw investor. This is for a lot of different reasons. It's for having fam family financial security. It's for being the young age that I am. I can kind of afford to make mistakes and still come back and build a good life for myself. I don't particularly have children's or significant other or anything of that nature to provide for. I don't have pets that live with me here in my own place. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of different reasons why I might be a higher risk threshold investor than a lot of other different. One of the main reasons, honestly, is I don't have a ton of money to lose. I mean, I know some people in the stock market YouTube space where they're dealing with six, seven, maybe even eight figure accounts I've seen. So ladies and gentlemen, when you consider all these different reasons, there's a lot of reasons why I might consider myself to be a higher risk threshold investor than what a lot of different things you see out here in the YouTube space. And I will kind of own that title for those reasons. So essentially in the stock market, you're gonna have investors who are very risk adverse and then investors who are more risk adverse. The, these investors are willing to adopt more risk for more reward. And on this end of the spectrum, you know, the more risk adverse who hate taking risk, you're gonna see people doing things mostly like buying treasury bonds. But when it comes to the stock market, stocks are just risky assets in general. So to mitigate these risks, what a lot of people on this end of the spectrum like to do is buy the index fund. The people on this end of the spectrum who stick to index funds only, these are what's known as boggleheads. I can do a whole separate video on boggleheads later if you guys would like. But essentially these people are just cashing in their chips saying, hey, I am okay with an average slash mediocre return. Just make sure I get a decent return. It's beating inflation. If you can more or less guarantee that to me, which was what the index fund package is designed to do, Again, you know, a broad bet, diversified bet over, you know, many different sectors, many different winning companies. I'm cashing that in. Yeah, I don't get to ride any like individual stock that becomes like a home run, just as Amazon, which could produce 1,000, 2,000 X gains on my money. But I'm going to be happy with what I get. And in the last 5, 10, 15 or so years in the US stock market, yeah, that is true for an index fund such as S&P 500 index fund. Um, you have seen a 10% return or so more or less compounded annually over these last few years. What I really want to point out about these investors on this end of the spectrum, the more risk, 
more risk willing by them not taking an index fund and if their bet somehow like works out, they can be handsomely rewarded. Over the last year, starting in April of 2022, I started a YouTube portfolio and this portfolio has gotten a return about above 15%. The thing is when you compare the compounded annual growth rate at 10% from an index fund over 40 years and you compare that to 15%, even just those five percentage points over that long a period of time makes such a huge, huge difference. And that's what I really wanna point out to you guys. I just wanna point out that there's a lot of reasons, yes, why people would buy index funds or index funds only, such as the Bogleheads. But just when you compare these two amounts, doesn't it have you questioning like what's possible with your life and what you actually wanna actualize for yourself and what you actually wanna manifest into your own life and of course these people are willing to do things like this and some people do get these desired outcomes well i am a higher risk told i well i am a higher risk threshold investor i mean just think about i'm younger i have less money to lose and i'm willing to be more aggressive with what a capital i do have combine that with the knowledge that i do have and turn that into some really special investments here over the next decade or so that's the current plan so of course i would be more oriented to this camp that is more risk willing but i do have a good amount of risk aversion and of course that comes with being a valued investor and a person who's willing to listen to the markets personally what i think is best is you decide where you want to lie on this for yourself me personally i've chosen an 80 20 split i have about 80 percent of my money in equities and you know my personal portfolio as well as my YouTube portfolio and I buy the companies mostly the companies that you see in the YouTube portfolio in this these portfolios and that's my holding of individual equity now index funds that's about the other 20% of my portfolio and I stick with uh, VOO the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund ETF again ETFs are super liquid super easy to exchange even during a trading day whereas mutual funds are less liquid and you have to sell at the end of a trading day but through a lot of work 401ks and things of that nature um, you actually have to use mutual funds for a lot of those work programs so uh, the FXIAX index fund or mutual index fund is a great option for that so I index personally through these two funds um, of course stay tuned to the end of the video I have two other really important tickers I'd like to talk to you guys about when it comes to these funds and I'm going to cover these indexes more in depth so ladies and gentlemen my personal plan is to as I age um, probably be going to become more risk adverse that is because of course as I'm getting closer to retirement I want my wealth to be more secure and it's because of this reason I'm probably willing to re consider my current 80-20 split perhaps as another decade goes by another decade goes by another decade goes by I'm going to continually adjust the split but for speaking as myself someone in my mid-20s who's read a decent amount of books on investing who's caught certain wins in the markets before I'm willing to have the 80-20 split because I'm willing to be more aggressive with my capital at this time and that's another thing I want to really emphasize if you are going to be on this more aggressive camp I think it's really important that you are well-researched, well-educated, and uh, well-tempered. You have a very strong temperament. One step you can do to achieve that feeling of personal self-confidence for yourself is, I would say, reading. I think there are a lot of great books out there. Ben Graham, The Intelligent Investor, Peter Lynch, One Up Wall Street, Morgan House, The Psychology of Money. I think another really great read is, uh, I'm reading currently right now, Value Investing by uh, Greenwald. It goes over a lot of the different Berkshire Hathaway letters in the past from, of course, the esteemed Warren Buffett. Go through a lot of this literature, um, really process and digest what it says, take a lot of different notes. I spend a lot of time when I read these books, I spend a lot of different minutes on every single page because I'm going through them very slowly and very carefully and really processing what the author's trying to tell to be a young man. So because I've digested some of this knowledge, I feel like I have a personal sense of self-confidence as well as temperament in the markets and I've kind of studied a lot of different value investing philosophy and value investing is actually one of the styles of investing that academic research kind of suggests can outperform even an index fund and it's not easy to outperform an index fund a lot of the academic research also suggests that a lot of different hedge funds about 80 percent of hedge funds underperform the index fund <clears throat> something like 90 percent of retail investors i believe retail investor is a bit of a derogatory term but essentially a retail investor is just what the media the mainstream media you'll often hear them say about people like me or possibly even you watching this video uh, individuals who go about their daily lives and on the side, uh, in their own personal wealth, they'll invest in um, public stocks and securities. I, I kind of prefer if they use the term like individual investors or something of that nature. 
but we will call it the retail investor because that is what it is. That is the most colloquial term. So retail investors, even hedge funds have a really hard time of outperforming the index fund. So why would I even try? Yes, of course, I am trying to beat the index fund, especially when you look at a portfolio such as my YouTube portfolio. I mean, why would I even have this portfolio if I didn't want to get a very solid gain, right? But wow, my personal philosophy and the nice thing about being an owner of index funds is I'm really securing a bet for the long term. And if my performance ever were to slump or something of that nature or several stocks in my portfolio go bankrupt or something of that nature, I still have some good skin in the market that's doing well over a long period of time. Not only that, in a very, very rare instance, one of the good things about admitting to you're only getting average gains through an index fund is that at worst you're going to have at any time average losses. So ladies and gentlemen, what that means, there could be a critical time in your value investor or personal investor career where a lot of your different high conviction individual stocks and names are down a whopping, whopping amount in a very tumultuous market. And of course, the index fund is a package that you might own at that time. And because it's broadly diversified over about a dozen different sectors, well, your index fund might only be down a small correction or maybe even just a 20% crash. Nothing like whatever bloodshed you saw in your individual stocks and securities. Now, this is what I love about the index fund. This is a critical time where investors can really make critical decisions that pan out well for them in the long run if they end up being correct. So the word crisis actually derives from opportunity. And what a value investor can do is a value investor can quickly raise cash by selling their index funds in a time like this. Now, I, I do not believe you should sell your index funds most, most, most often than not. However, there are times where perhaps generational events, right? And if you do truly know you do have those high conviction names in the market that are taking a beating, then that's the correct move to do as an investor. I can't refute that. For example, let's say I had a 90% S&P 500 portfolio, a 10% Tesla stock portfolio in March of 2020. March of 2020 was of course a huge, huge, huge downturn in the stock market at this time, largely based on a lot of fears from geopolitical events and news circulating at that time regarding things like CV-19. Now imagine me as an investor at this time made the decision, hmm, you know what? At this day, around March 20th of 2020, I'm going to actually sell about 10% of my VOO and I'm going to put this into my Tesla stock because I'm not really a huge fan of how much my Tesla stock has gone down as well as the upside I currently see on my high conviction Tesla stock. Well, I'm, so let's say I had a very strong outlook on Tesla. I end up executing the move, readjust my portfolio. I now own 80% of my assets are in the S&P 500. 20% of my assets are now in the Tesla stock. And when I doubled my holdings from 10% to a 20% allocation, I did it kind of at a more strategic time. I was really as an investor, not liking how the markets were swing swinging, they were swinging into extreme fear. I get a little more greedy. Again, my whole psychology as a value investor is entirely contrarian. So when I see, you know, the red in the portfolio, I just see low prices and I just get more excited and just kind of agitated to wanting to buy, you know, my high conviction stocks. So I end up pulling the move. I still, of course, feel very comfortable with my 80%, you know, in the index fund, the SP 500, but ladies and gentlemen, that 10% um, with, you know, that capital I was willing to quickly raise and put into uh, my individual high conviction names, that completely outsized my returns going forward. And yes, I was more or less risk adverse. And in hindsight, you know, I probably do wish I had everything in Tesla. Yes, of course. But for this hypothetical uh, investor example, I'm sure that that person is very happy they pulled that move in March of 2020. And that's the optionality that index funds provide for you. With average returns come average losses and it can really anchor your portfolio. 